Good afternoon, everybody. On today's Business Applications Lunch and Learn, we're gonna be talking with Michael De Silva. Michael represents the Northeast Success Organization as a general manager based out of uh, New York. Correct. Today, we're actually in the Burlington Technology Center here in Boston, Massachusetts, and uh, we appreciate Michael's time. Michael, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's great. So today, we wanna to talk about customer success and what does that mean from a Microsoft standpoint, but also specifically for the Microsoft business applications ecosystem? Uh, sure, so we like to look at customer success as customer success equals customer experience plus customer outcomes. So, you know, traditionally, if you look back on Microsoft's journey, right, we, we always, everybody always knew our products, right? We sold yeah. products, we sold licenses, um, IT knew us from that, from that lens. Um, you know, in our own transformation over the last couple of years, uh, mostly under Satya's leadership, we've really turned it around to be more outcomes based, right? So we, when we go to customers now, we're not there pushing a product. We're there pushing, well, what are you really trying to do? Uh, so it, it kind of, it helps us, you know, boil the ocean in a way, because we have you know, so many products and so many different opportunities yeah. uh, to help customers that we want to figure out what's the best way for the customer to get to the outcome that they, that they asked for. So customer success is, is one way to do that, right? Obviously we have our pre-sales resources who are there and they're really there to set the outcome, uh, make sure that whatever product, uh, whatever partner, whatever, uh, whatever Microsoft services comes in as well. And, and we try to put that all together and have the same exact um, criteria, success criteria uh, for where they're gonna be. But we, we used to, uh, most, most Microsoft mostly known for selling the product and then we go, okay, we sold the product. And, you know, we, we, not that we don't stick with the customer, because uh, we absolutely do, but past that, it, it's, it's always been uh, kind of a gray area as to where, where we go and the, the field, does the field leave, does the field stay? Do we, so we pivoted uh, you know, a couple years ago to saying, you know what, we want to get to value realization now with our customers, right? We set the performance criteria, or the success criteria, sorry, and, and we want, we're going to help them get there now. Yeah. So the customer success unit was born, uh, and it's legitimately there for value realization, right? Whether it's a, a CSM, and we'll talk about CSMs, uh, or customer success managers. Yeah. Um, in the biz app space, or the modern workplace space, whether it's customer uh, cloud solution architects on the Azure space, um, they all stay within the organization, and their job is simply, to make sure customers see value from what they bought. Uh, you know, we were talking uh, beforehand a little bit about um, shelfware, right? Like that was a, that's a thing, right? In, in all technology industry, shelfware is a thing. You have software that you purchased that you never actually got to use. Yep. Um, so in the services world, as we are now a services company, shelfware is not good. Uh, it doesn't exist really, right? You're, you bought something, you're paying for it either monthly or you paid for it all up front or however you did it. Uh, you have, the, every day you don't use it is a day you are spending money that you that is not going to give you any value at all. Yeah. Uh, so we need to accelerate that. We did so by creating the customer success unit, uh, customer success manager, CSAs in Azure. Um, and it's been, it's been a great ride. It's been really well received. Uh, and uh, it's changing our relationship with our customers. Yeah, I think a lot of customers are interested in driving those outcomes and looking at what are the, the methodologies for impacting the culture, taking the, the massive tool set from Microsoft, whether it's Azure or Office 365, our security solutions, AI, biz apps, yeah. like the ability to drive that outcome and repeat that that's where the, the customer success org really can, can make an impact for our customers. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So from a customer standpoint, what would be some of the activities that a customer success manager for business applications, sure. how would they get involved with an organization? Sure. So, you know, kind of like I said uh, before, we'll, we'll take it from that, from that lens, right? So the, the, let's say the sale has been made. Customer has decided, it isn't really the sales, but the customer has decided, listen, we're gonna go with Dynamics or we're gonna go with business apps, Power Platform, whatever uh, whatever it is, and we're gonna make sure that we're, we're gonna get that into our organization somehow. Okay. The somehow is, is the part that we, we try to fill. Uh, customer success managers are engaged with customers to make sure that the value is realized and, and, and a lot of, there's a lot of stages to that. I mean, A number one is, are we all rowing in the same direction? What's the KPIs? What's the success criteria? What's the problem we're trying to solve? Exactly. Okay. So let's make sure that's out on the table. Customer success managers own that problem. 
in the solving of said problem. Okay. It's stated it's in a success journey. Uh, there's documentation that goes along with that. Um, and we all agree, customer and Microsoft partner, MCS, whoever together, that that's where we're going. A number one, good. Um, we all feel good about that process. Uh, and now we have to get there, right? So then, then you just lock in change management. So all of our CSMs are pro site trained. They use that methodology okay. for getting people from point A to point B. Uh, and that's a super, could be a super rocky road, right? We were talking before about you know partners and their engagement and getting data into the new platform and all of those things are difficult. Our, our CSMs are not there to be, uh, not there for deployment in that way of a technical uh, aspect. So that's where we engage some of our great partners yeah. um, and, and also MCS, Microsoft Consulting Services, um, to help customers do all that, that heavy lifting stuff. But the entire time, uh, I'm not a huge fan of football analogies, but kind of the quarterback of all of that, the person who's making sure that all the plays are being run correctly, many could be the head coach, I guess then, um, is, is really the CSM who's there to say, I have partners doing this. I've got me working with them on how this is going to look and feel. Who, what, what, what did they use before? What are they going to use today? How am I going to make people feel it's okay to use the new platform? Yeah. Um, what's funny, and I've noticed, just because you have a like, let's go CRM. Let's put ERP. It's right, so it's, uh, Dynamics does a whole bunch of different things. But let's look at CRM for a second. Just because you have a CRM doesn't mean your salespeople are actually going to use it, which I find mind blowing. But it's actually really true. Okay. Um, how do you get them comfortable with it? How do you make it attractive for them? How do you get their you know, user input back to the decision makers in a company as Microsoft? Like talk to them, talk to the users, get use cases down from them and get back to their the own the, the, the customer and say, listen, what your people are saying is this. We have to change this because they all want it to look like this and we can't we can't do something without their help. This is a you know most places, this is a democracy uh, within the company and they all want it. So we act as that liaison as well. Um, and I think the, the number one thing we do, and I, it's how I started this, is we all row in the same direction. Just get, make sure everybody is on board. Yeah. Um, and then as that's going there, we're the single point of contact for escalations, uh, partner problems. We, we, are, we help partners uh, not, just, you know, not just get involved, um, but also you know, become a part of that company as well. So we're all working on behalf of the company and the best CSM relationships, I'm sure you've seen it as well, we have is the CSM doesn't come to Microsoft office. They go to the customer's office. They yeah. have, they have a few badges. They They're badge in. highly involved. And Everybody walks over and look, there's there's Jane, yep. there's Mark, yep. whoever the CSMs are, um, actual names of actual CSM. <laughs> um, and they're, they're sitting at the customer and it's they're a part of them. They're not, just because they have a Microsoft employee, they're like, yeah. not really, they, they kind of work with us. So. Yeah, they're really metric on the success of driving those outcomes and the consumption and the adoption of that solution. Oh, that I mean, if we're gonna go really deep in this, I'll be very candid. And and I think we've said this publicly, none of our customer success people have quotas. Which is excellent. They're not sales driven. It's yeah. not their it's not their thing. Right. Their quotes, but it is it's not their thing. Their yeah. their thing is adoption. Their metrics are simply our are how many so you know, X amount of X customer has X amount of uh, seats or licenses or whatever you want to say, uh, of a service. Uh, we want to make sure they use them all because they bought them. Yeah. So how close are you to getting them to use them all? Yeah. And once, and, and if they, and, and every at the end of every year, what everybody is see how much impact they've had with their customer. It's how close we got to that to that number, and how how we can get them p past that. It's really how everybody is is metric around here now. Yeah, and you mentioned how Microsoft has transformed into a services based economy. Right, yeah. we're in the consumption economy nowadays, and the ability to light up a new service with a credit card, or to be able to open up a browser and start you know, a new technology platform, it's instant, right? Yeah. So Microsoft, whether it's Azure, Modern Workplace, Dynamics 365, the Power Platform, Power BI, right? The ability to help transform and to help, you know, that adoption. So you mentioned ProSci. So for somebody that might not be um, aware of what ProSci represents, can you just talk about um, how the customer success managers are ProSci certified, and what does that mean? Sure. So ProSci is a methodology on change management. Okay. So how do you introduce new things into an organization with the least amount of friction possible to remove the either the old thing or it's a brand new thing, 
right? So we'll take CRM or ERP as an example, right? You say you came from uh, a different CRM, maybe one of our competitors or maybe a homegrown solution of some kind. How do you ingest the information from there, put it over to here, make the look and feel the, say, the a way that is conducive to the to, to or uh, to the environment that it's that it's in, and also you know makes sense and, and is welcoming to the user. Um, so how do you get all of these get from point A to point B in the least amount of friction possible? Because change management, people inherently fear change. Yeah. It's just it's just a, a fact of human nature. So how do you make it so that there, you, you can remove some of that. So ProSci is a legitimate step-by-step -step methodology like any other methodology you think of in coding. You can think of the old waterfall, you can think of Agile, you can think of those. It's a methodology built into just changing uh, environments or for this one, it's, it's customer environments from a technology standpoint from A to B in a as seamless as possible, which is not possible to be seamless, but as seamless as humanly possible so that the, it doesn't impact your users. Because the last thing we need when we introduce friction into a system, you not only you don't lose money or a value or whatever you want to call it from the product, you're losing it from your people. Yeah. Like the, the them being at their peak at all times and, and doing whatever they can to help your business move forward is the key to your business, right? So if we can if there's friction there, that impact is so much larger than just the this is sitting on the shelf impact over here, right? So we try to make sure that that's, that's as frictionless as possible. Yeah, and so removing that friction is part of that transformation. It's yeah. a part of that value in extracting outcomes from investments that you've made. And, and as Absolutely. a partner, Microsoft wants to you know, be woven into that fabric with our customers because that's where we have mutual success. Um, and to help them achieve their business outcomes, right? Absolutely. So whether it's analytics or if it's processes, if it's customer care, if it's marketing automation, if it's helping to digify your organization and to go from where you are to where you want to be, there's a lot of excellent resources that the, the customer success org represents. It's actually a really good point. One thing that I didn't mention, what we try to do to the best of our ability, and it's mostly based on, on resource availability, but we've been pretty good at it so far, is we match the customer success manager with the industry in which they're, they're going to. Excellent. So yeah. that's one thing also that Microsoft has evolved into over the past, uh, probably say half a decade, maybe a little longer, into understanding that our customers uh, live in industries and yeah. those industries have uh, have certain types of needs yeah. that we uh, you know it isn't just a license anymore you, if you're, you're fo focused on outcomes uh, and you when you bucket them all in one industry you end up getting a really good concentration of knowledge in a group of people uh, I mean within our you know within our own region right we have uh, we have four or five different industries and we actually put them in different groups and we know that 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 group is specific here with our account teams right but yeah. those account teams are specific to that industry. And it really helps because it, it makes sure that the knowledge transfer that goes on in there is fantastic. Uh, and then when CSMs get involved as well, and they're in that in that group, you know, whether it's manufacturing, retail, uh, media, and entertainment, uh, you know, healthcare, life sciences, financial, financial ser services. services. Yeah, I mean, it's, manufacturing. Oh my gosh, they yeah. they completely, um, and you know, we also hire them with that in mind as well, right? Because we have we have some verticals that we make sure that we have to, whether it's healthcare, financial services, manufacturing, media, like re retail, we have to make sure that we're servicing those customers because those are kind of defined industries uh, by us and by, by the, by uh, um, just by the R and technology industry in general. Uh, but the, the, we found that the industry focus is almost shocking to some of the customers. They just don't expect it yeah. from us, from technology companies in general. Yeah. It's been huge for us. Uh, and we, you know, if you have a CSM, the odds are that CSM is aligned to you pretty strongly. Uh, they might have a couple other smaller customers maybe that they're, they're working with as well, but we always group it together by industry um, as much as humanly possible based on how many resources, but we've been pretty good at it so far. Yeah, and it's excellent, right? Because the, each industry might have different regulations or different concerns, things that are happening from a, you know, a, a data consumption and yep. retention, um, you know, so to, to bring in that subject matter expertise into that discussion with that DNA of here's Absolutely. here's what's going on within the industry and here's how we've helped other customers and to help bring that um, challenger mindset and that suggestion of here's what 
we can do from a value add that really helps to accelerate that transformation and that outcome and that ultimately that value. Without that, so digital transformation, which we've heard it for now years and years and years, right? And I think when we first introduced it into the Microsoft culture, um, it was kind of like, you know, it seems like an industry buzzword, it seems like this, but I think under, again, under our, our leadership here, uh, it's a it's a real, uh, it's been a real unbelievable journey. It's not just a real thing. It's been a real thing no, no matter what, but industry focus on that, uh, su you know, success criteria focus as well, um, outcomes-based selling, all of those things are just pieces of how you do that. It's been remarkable to watch how many customers of ours are now coming to us with digital transformation needs. You know, I, I, I hearken back to just years ago when, uh, when we were sitting around here and it became about selling licenses. And it just, it's just not about that anymore. It's, it's fun to watch. It's been a pleasure to be a part of it, right? And you see how even the, our entire sales force and then our customer success org, our industry teams, our worldwide teams, like everybody's just talking about that. It has been for a long time now. And it just became a part of our culture now. It's really, really fun to say. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. You know, and change is constant. It's either change yeah. or be changed. And sure. you know, with the, the tools and capabilities, if you're not embracing and leveraging new business models to find new revenue streams or new ways of creating customer yeah. experiences, you're gonna be forced to one way or the other. Sure. Either a yeah. more nimble competitor is gonna force you to, you know, react. So it's about being proactive rather than reactive. The disruptors have taken over. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Michael, any, any parting words? No, I, I just thanks for this. These are great. I, I, uh, I, think, um, I think what you're doing here to get the, the community involved. Um, it's, uh, it, it's really fun to see. Uh, I, I think, I think this, is, uh, this is necessary and uh, I hope, you know, I wish you all the success. Yeah, this has been uh, very helpful and uh, tune in to additional business application lunch and learns. But uh, again, thank you for watching. Uh, I'm Nick Fratello and on behalf of Michael DeSilver, we, uh, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Yeah.